be here this evening. Thank you for the opportunity to be in this little town that we call home. May it stay safe. Help us to keep it going forward, if we can, by making the right choices for the most people. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Go on, please stand for the pilgrims. Next flag is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. And the second reading of ordinance number. 10-216. An ordinance of the City Council of the City of Prestonsburg amending ordinance number 12 2005 section 13. This is the uh, smoking ordinance adding e-cigarettes to the baby. Okay. Need a motion? So moved. Got a motion need a second? Second. Discussion. Any discussion from the floor? Okay. On that, uh, we have to do a roll call. Harry Adams? Yes. Tim Coley? Yes. David Gerhardt? Yes. Freddie Gover? Yes. Kimber McGuire? Yes. Speedy Munry? No. John Wills? Yes. All right. Passes. Second reading of ordinance number 11 2016. An ordinance of the Pressburg City Council amending ordinance number 21-88, section 114.40, to allow Sunday alcohol sales. Okay. Um, motion. So moved. So motion. And second. Second. We got a second. Discussion from the floor. Right want to discuss the vote on. Yes, sir. Thank you all for letting us be here tonight. My name is Tommy Reed. As many, most all of you know, Pastor Fitzpatrick Baptist Church at Preston Berkeley. And uh, it's not the first time we've we've been dancing this dance. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to speak to this, though. And uh, I'm, a, I'm here for a couple of reasons. Number one, I'm a, I'm a citizen. I'm entitled to the privileges that a Democratic Republic gives, but I'm also a servant of the Most High God. It was last Tuesday I called you, had you on my mind, and out of the blue I called uh, our mayor, and media, as you know, Harry, you know, I've been here many times bragging on our town. What a wonderful job everybody does. From the city utilities to the fire, police, road department, garbage people there. So it truly is, like the sign says, a great place to live and work. The life is simple here. It's clean. We live in peace and safety. And you all do a great job. And uh, I appreciate him and probably the next day on Wednesday calling and saying, you know, preacher, I respect you. I wanted you to know the city council had a reading of this ordinance. I hadn't heard about it. Uh, you haven't seen anything on it. And I appreciate you letting me know about that. All right. I appreciate that. And so I thought a lot about in the season of Thanksgiving. Uh, I'm very thankful for a lot of things. I'm thankful for our country, you know. Just indulge me for a second. My life is based on the scripture. And uh, the Bible says, blessed is a nation whose God is the Lord, Psalm 33, 20. For many decades, America has been. We've gotten away from several of those precepts as we've gone to, through the generations over the last 30 years especially. And we've turned to other gods instead of one true living God. In Proverbs chapter 12, verse 15, uh, chapter 13 says, There is a way that seems right to a man, but 
for the tin is the way of death. And I thought a lot about the alcohol sales in several different ways. Number one, uh, the Lord rescued me out of alcoholism at the age of 17. I started drinking when I was 15. And at Belfort High School, it just exasperated and blew up, and I was out of control as a, as a person. You might say, well, it's moderation or whatever, but I know what a hold it took on my life. And it was destroying my life. So, Harry, this is something personally. I've, I've been there myself. I have seen it. It's ruined many people in my family and friends. And as 18 and a half years being a pastor, Freddie, I've, I've counseled and seen what is done to people and, and relationships. And so I'm here to ask you, please don't do this. Number one, from personal experience, but number two, on what it does to people's lives. And number three, uh, I would ask you, don't dishonor the Lord on his day. We all grew up to know better than that. And the city's, city is entitled to try and find ways to make revenue. Granted, and you all are smart, and you'll find those ways. But I'm just asking, please don't do it this way. Uh, find other ways. Then the Lord will not bless this. And besides some people making money personally with their businesses, the city might gain some, but what it does collectively to people in ways that you may never see after you vote will be, a, will be immense. And so, Mr. Mayor, thank you for I ask you all. Please not pass this. You know the comments from the floor? Uh, right, I'm sorry. You know the comments from the floor? Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, I'm sorry. Last year, we had this same discussion. And I, I, you know, everybody kind of knew how I felt, where I stood. But I've struggled all year long with it, and it ain't because of alcohol. It's because of the way it happened. You see, I signed up for this job because I wanted to work with people on a fair and balanced way. And that's the way this council spoke to me. So that particular night that we did this, Tommy, uh, when it was last year, I remember, was not a fair and balanced night. Although my mind was made up the way it needed to be and I felt good about mine, I ended up hurting my counterparts in some ways because of it being an unfair and balanced situation. So I want to apologize to you, Harry, publicly, that I did not intend to do that uh, because you believe in things that you want. We all do. We all have our own beliefs. But I, when I left that meeting that night, it was not a fair and balanced, uh, although I made my statement. And I'm not going to let cup of alcohol stand in the way of a respect for anybody. For sure. Except, that's all I got to say about that. Any other discussion? Good. I have some. Okay. Uh, Everything that Tommy said is, of course, the truth. I had my own bout with alcohol. It lasted me a little bit longer. Uh, 38 years ago, I quit, never to tip it again. I do not drink, don't tend to. And I know what it does to people's lives. It almost destroyed my family and my life. People may think that they're hiding something when they drink and get out in public or go to work or whatever, but they're not. You would be surprised at people, people's intelligence and knowledge of knowing what you are without you saying a word. Just by your eyes and your body language. This thing that we are charged with as part of the President of the City Council is 
not to express, in my opinion, a personal uh, credence. Uh, if I were to make a personal decision, uh, I would say no. And I said no with Tim the last time. And I have struggled with it too, Tim. I'm not going to make any apologies because I, I still feel like at that time I, it, you know, I, I made the right decision. I've had a long time to look at statistics, a long time to look at facts, and a lot of experience to know that it's not about alcohol or when you drink. The Bible is full of wine. Wine was at the Last Supper. There's no commandment that says thou shalt not drink on Sunday. And if someone wants to drink, they're going to drink. It doesn't matter if they get it on Saturday night or even Sunday. I guarantee you they either know someone that owns a liquor store or a family member that's close enough to go in the back door and get what they need to go golfing, fishing, or whatever they want to do. So it, in my opinion, it's not a personal thing. It's a town thing. It's, it's for everyone. For eight years I have sat and watched the, our little city struggle to try to maintain a voyage toward some type of freedom of uh, being choked around the neck by not having the funds to do projects. We're right now in the middle of that, that thing. Uh, we can't do anything with the bridge. We just don't have anything. To, we don't have the money to do it with. And I, I'm just afraid it's going to stay that way. So, not from my personal experience or from my very person, that I'm going to uh, try to improve the income of this little town tonight, and I hope and I pray that if we do this Sunday thing, that it will benefit all the people of Christmas, not just a few, or not just someone that owns a liquor store, but that's my two cents for it. I would not want to say that I would stand by and let our town settle in third place or fourth place behind Paints or Pipeville and every other small town in Kentucky that is probably already taken up this particular ordinance. So that's my two cents for it. I appreciate the opportunity to say it. Can I say something? Yes, sir. I appreciate that. I don't even know what we're doing here tonight. Mm -hmm. Sundays is, is, is as, brother, as the brother said, my name is David Garrett. I'm pastor of the Avenue Church in Preston. So years ago, we had a Gideon speaker at our church and found out that Ford County was only one of two counties in the state of Kentucky that didn't let our children have Bibles. So I got 80 some pastors to stand and we year that is to be Bibles. Mm -hmm. Now Sundays is the day that the church goes out to each in Preston's Park. You, you require a whole lot of money from the church in Preston's Park because we eat on Sundays. Now if we have to go out on Sundays to eat and we've got to Say to let them have their little parties, and I'll, again, we'll just protest, and we'll see that you don't get that money on Sunday. I mean, I'm not trying to be rude, but Sunday's the Lord's Day. And if we can't be big enough, I'm a Vietnam veteran, I put my time in for my country. I'm a pastor of 30 some years. And if we can't give Sunday to the Lord, and go out and take our families to church, take our families to a restaurant, feed them, and I'll be the first one to get in line to shut Sunday services down. I'll boycott every pastor I can get. And we'll go to Paintsville and we'll go to Pipeville and we'll see what's needed. So the money you're going to get, you'll lose if you do it. I promise you that. God bless you. Any more discussion? Carol. Mm -hmm. Harry Adams? Yes. Tim Coy? No. David 
David Gerhardt? Yes. Freddie Goble? Yes. Kimber McGuire? No. B.D. Nunnery? Yes. Don Willis? Yes. Have a nice vote. Carries. Next read and second read. Uh, well, can I have a do over? That first ordinance we read was the uh, enforced code enforcement board. I'm sorry, it wasn't the smoke. Oh, okay. So, right. we'll probably need to read both. We'll have to read both on uh, reading orders number 10 2016. Reread it? Yes. Uh, orders of the City Council of the City of Pressburg amending ordinance number 12 2013. <coughs> this is the uh, code, code board uh, fines that they increased. All right. Any discussion? <coughs> Any roll call? I want a motion to second. Oh, so you got a motion? Oh, okay. Got a second. Any roll call? Harry Adams? Yes. Tim Cooley? Yeah. David Gerhardt? Yes. Freddie Goble? Yes. Tim McGuire? Yes. B.D. Nunnery? Yes. And Don Willis? Yes. All right. Now that was number 12. Now we go to the last one. An ordinance of the City of Pressburg, Kentucky, amending ordinance number 7 to 09 to amend and add prohibition of vapor products in all public places and places of employment within the city. Okay. Now that one, I'll make the motion. All right. Any second? Second. Discussion? Anybody on the floor? Yes. I have, a, I have a quick question. Yes, um, would this particular ordinance have a dispensation for our shop. It is not going to affect your shop. The only thing being that it says uh, you can't smoke tobacco, tobacco products exactly. in your shop. So but you can your shop. do the e stuff. The, okay. The stuff. Okay. Okay. That's yeah. The, the same as if a tobacco store can smoke in their store, you all can have some cigarettes and that. Okay. Products in your Okay. Is December the 19th, the meeting at the MAC. The next city council meeting will be held at the MAC. It will be held as a special, um, a special call meeting, even though it will be on a regular meeting night. Uh, it will be a public forum, and at that point, I will discuss how things are going in the city, basically a state of the city address. I'm required to do that at least once a year. So that will be on December 19th at the Mountain Arc Center. All the public is welcome to come. We'll do the swearing in then. We'll do the swearing in then also, Brittany and Mike. I'm not sorry, sorry. Okay. Have you invited others in as discussed? I won't try to get to today. What, what time is that? Then? Six o'clock. Normal time, six o'clock. Okay. Got a motion adjourned. Can I ask one question before you do? Now I'm leaving on a full Sunday. You're going to sell beer and alcohol on Sunday. Is this correct? Yes, sir. Well, there's, yes. Time, there's time constraints. Yeah. Do what I mean? There's time constraints. Yes, sir. Uh, I think Stonecrest Golf Course is 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. And everything else is 1 to 9. Yes. So in fair love and war, if we take our families to a restaurant, person works on Sunday, we might sit there and watch other people drink while they're eating. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Thank you. If they're after one o'clock, yes, sir. Thank you. I appreciate you, guys. Uh, yeah, motion for a second. Yeah. Adjourn. Second. Yeah, second. All in favor? All right. All opposed? No, we're going to stay this time. We have a special call meeting tonight. Uh, we addressed three different ordinances. Second, we have a special call meeting.
one was for the code uh, board and how much uh, the fines were going to be for different code violations. The second was e cigarettes are now included in our non smoking ban. You can't smoke with an e cigarette. The same rules you can't for tobacco. And the third is that uh, alcohol sales, Sunday alcohol sales, from one to nine. The restaurants, other stuff, nine to nine. Before 